Good morning, everybody. Good morning, Derek. Welcome back to our Sunday service. Uh, this is one of the three that we have pre-recorded before me and Naomi goes on break. Uh, if you need anything for, um, I guess, the next week after you're watching this, please talk to your elder or Sandra. Um, and look out for your emails. Friday, uh, we'll be posting the link for these videos. You can find them here on our YouTube channel and SACO. Um, yeah, blessings to you all as we um, may be separated but are not alone. So reach out and talk to one another. And I'm going to pass it on to Naomi for worship. Good morning, everyone. Good morning, everyone. And we are going to sing Amazing Grace this morning. Please join me in singing how the amazing grace of God is here with us every single day. Amazing grace, how sweet the sound that saved us. celebrate God's peace. Jesus Christ, born the Prince of Peace, calls our community to justice and leads us in the way of peace. We call on one another to honesty and humility and respond to each other with abundant grace and forgiveness. Our community values relationships. We live in harmony with one another. Even when we disagree, we strive to glorify God in everything we do. Our community longs for unity. We work together with other churches and organizations to live out God's reconciling love for all the world to see. Together we are a sign of God's peace in the world. God of all people 
and all nations, you break through the cynicism of our world and lead us like a gentle shepherd. Open our eyes to see the signs of your coming kingdom and inspire us to participate in all your doing. In Jesus' name, amen. Our scripture today comes from Romans chapter 14, verses 17 to 19. For the kingdom of God is not a matter of eating and drinking, but of righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. Because anyone who serves Christ in this way is pleasing to God and receives human approval. Let us therefore make every effort to do what leads to peace and to mutual edification. Matthew chapter 5, verses 9. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called children of God. Last week we talked about hope, and in this Advent season we are looking forward to future hope with the second coming by focusing on Christ's birth and his first coming. And how hope is very interesting because it always comes from a place of lacking or needing. Hope is not fulfilled. It's a desire for something more. And our hope for tomorrow in this new world, this new heaven and new earth, is in this very real and small way being achieved today. That the kingdom of heaven, all things we look for in heaven, are being done today in us and through us and in our communities. And if we open our eyes and we give God the process of how that happens, we can see that and join in what he's doing. Now if hope is not fulfilled, what happens when it is fulfilled? When hope becomes something else? And I believe what that something else is, is peace that we're learning about today. When there's something that you're hoping will happen, love, if you're hoping for um, restored relationships, finances, a lending hand, when that is fulfilled, then that brings about peace. You're no longer in turmoil about that. It reminds me of a story. I was in Thrifty's uh, a couple weeks ago, and they've got that long lineup. And I was in line, the last person behind a, a gentleman. We we're right at that corner where they got all that cheese out. Um, and he was taking his time. The guy had me picking, kind of shopping, and he was leaving a gap ahead of him. Doesn't really matter because it doesn't make you go any faster. But this couple came up behind us and the gentleman asked me, are you guys waiting in line? Simple, polite question. But the gentleman in front of me lost his mind, got very angry and was like, are you in a rush? What, I can't shop anymore, just mind your own business. And he was getting very upset about this simple question that someone asked. And it bothered me because I was thinking about it the rest of that day. Why was he so angry? What happened in his life that that amount of anger over question was his first response? And the only thing I could think of was that this gentleman didn't have any peace, that he was living in this turmoil, that um, because a person who's at peace, anger is not their first reaction. Um, they're more leaning towards understanding than being understood. And so this idea of hope being fulfilled and that being peace is what I want to talk to you about today. Whenever I think of that passage in Matthew, blessed be the peacemakers, I've always thought that meant a global peace that bringing peace to nations or countries or that. But as I read the rest of the Sermon on the Mount and how personal it is between those and those around you, 
I started realizing that we, as Christians, are called to help bring about that peace in other people's lives. And if peace is the fulfillment of hope, then the hope people have in a better tomorrow or finding love in this um, situation they're in or they need to be able to trust someone or they need name it, finances or they're hoping that someone will come and help mow their lawn or whatever it is. All these little aspects of hope, if we as Christians can fulfill those and bring peace about, I think that's what Matthew's talking about. Blessed be the peacemakers. We can bring peace through Jesus Christ into people's lives. I don't know of a conflict that's a, a bigger conflict that is can be found true peace without both sides being at peace themselves. If the argument or conflict is resolved and one side feels that they are getting the short end, there will never be true peace there. There will always be conflict, um, even in um, violence, and that there's the only way for there to be true peace is if the members themselves have peace. And if we can bring peace to people, then we can expand that peace and go grow. As we look at Advent, we look at hope, we look at the future hope that is coming with the new heaven and new earth, and that hope that's being fulfilled today in people's lives um, on a smaller thing, on a smaller scale, but that kingdom of heaven being present today that people have hope, that they're hoping for something more, that this world is not enough for them, that it's not complete, that they need something, and we as Christians, if we're able to, can help that need, can bring, can fulfill that hope and bring peace to that situation. And next week we're gonna look at um, what happens when that is done. So this Advent season, we look back to the Prince of Peace to give us hope for tomorrow. May our eyes be open to see and our ears be open to hear what God is doing in us and through us. May we be blessed peacemakers in our communities. Amen. Please join me for our next Christmas carols, Hark the Herald Angels Sing. Hark the herald angels sing Glory to the newborn King Peace on earth and mercy mild God and sinners reconciled Jesus.
God will come and mend you out. God with us. Oh, come, oh, come, Emmanuel, and ransom captive Israel, thou Lord in lonely exile here, and to the Son of God your love, Lord, that we can still share your truth and your gospel with people, that we can still live out um, the embodiment of your kingdom, Lord. In those situations where people are hoping for something, if we are able to fulfill that and bring peace and give us courage and wisdom to do that, and if we can, give us opportunity to lead them to you. May the God of endurance and encouragement grant you to live in such harmony with one another in accordance with Jesus Christ, that together you may, with one voice, glorify the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Amen.